It's finally time for the second Christmas edition of my potential trick question videos. These are going to be four fun questions where in some of the questions I'm trying to trick you and in some of the other questions they are just straightforward questions and I'm not going to warn you which is which. These quant questions are going to be perfect for anyone studying the GRE, GMAT or really any exam where math is involved. Starting with the first question. Philip is older than Tom. Susan is younger than Sally. Quantity A is the product of Philip's age and Sally's age. Quantity B is the product of Tom's age and Susan's age. And you have four answers to choose from. Is quantity A bigger? Is quantity B bigger? Is the answer C both quantities are equal? Or is the answer D we don't have enough information to tell? And if you'd like, pause the video, think about this one for a bit, and then see if it chimes in with my answer. Okay, ready for the answer. This was actually a straightforward question. No real tricks involved. I thought as it's Christmas, let's start off with a nice one. Here, it's simply the fact that Philip is the older of the pair of Philip and Tom. Sally is the older of the pair, Sally and Susan. Therefore, quantity A must be bigger. The product of two bigger numbers simply must be bigger than the product of two smaller numbers. So we know for sure that quantity A is bigger. Don't forget product means multiplying the two numbers together. No particular trick here, just wanted to get you warmed up. Quantity A must be bigger. Let's get to the next Christmas question. Ginevra thinks of a number X and then halves that number to get Y. What's bigger? 0.5y or x? Here the answer is d. We can't tell. Even though it seems like quantity b should be bigger, right? Because quantity a, you've not only halved x to get y, you've then halved it again because it's 0.5y. But here's the rub. It never said x is a positive number. If x was a negative number, for example, negative 4, if we halve it, we get negative 2. And if we multiply that answer by 0 0.5, halving it again, we get negative 1. But negative 1 is bigger than negative 4, quantity b. Why? Because negative 1 is higher up on the number line. It's closer to 0. Therefore, it's bigger than negative 4. So in that case, quantity a would be bigger than quantity b. Of course, there are hundreds of examples where quantity b is bigger. For example, the number 10 or the number 100. But there are occasions when x is negative that halving something makes it bigger. And that was the trick there. Right, you guys are fully warmed up. Time for probably my favourite of the four trick questions. This one. Peter thinks of a positive number x. What's bigger, quantity a, root x over 10, or quantity b, 2x? You might want to pause and think about this one and see what you get. Okay, time for my explanation. This time I am sure that so many of you are convinced that quantity B must be bigger. You're thinking, okay, it's Christmas and Philip is known for his tricks, but come on, quantity A we are square rooting and then we are dividing by 10. Whereas in quantity B, we're doubling it. Like how can it possibly be that quantity A is ever bigger than quantity B. And there's something you need to realize, actually two things you need to realize. First, yes, the question did say that Peter thought of a positive number, but it didn't say a positive integer. So we can have decimals or fractions. The second thing you need to realize is that when you square root fractions less than one, particularly really small fractions, the result is far bigger than the original. Test it out on your calculator. Try square rooting 0 0.1. The answer is a lot bigger than 0 0.1. We get a lot bigger by square rooting a decimal. But some of you are still determined and like, yeah, fine, I tried 0 0.5 on the calculator. I even tried 0 0.1 maybe, some of you are saying. But still, quantity A was smaller because of the divide by 10 and because quantity B had a times by two. So let's give you the counterexample, because here the answer is actually D. What's the counterexample? 
What about a tiny, tiny positive fraction, like 1 over 10,000? Why 10,000? Because it's easier to square root without a calculator. The square root of 10,000 is 100. So if x is 1 over 10,000, then root x is 1 over 100, the square root of 10,000. Notice that's actually 100 times bigger than the original x. So square rooting that fraction made it 100 times bigger. That's kind of freaky. So that even when we divide it by 10, and 1 over 100 divided by 10 means times by 1 over 10, which gets you 1 over 1,000, even when we divide by 10, we're still at a number, 1 over 1,000, that's still much bigger than the original, actually 10 times bigger than the original x. So quantity b, which is 2 times the original, 2 times 1 over 10,000 is 2 over 10,000, which simplifies to 1 over 5,000. Quantity b, which is 2x, 1 over 5,000, is still smaller than quantity a, which ends up being 1 over 1,000. And how did we perform this incredible magic trick? By picking a really, really tiny positive fraction. Now, honestly, hands up if you fell for that one. If you didn't, <laughs> Merry Christmas to you because you were really focused. Uh, I'm really impressed there because I think a lot of people would have fallen for that one. And my final question isn't really a trick question. It's more of a Christmas-themed quant question. In how many ways can the letters of the word snow, S-N-O-W, be arranged such that the W is to the left of the S? Now, some of you who've watched my letter arrangement video in the past will know this trick, but the rest of you might find this question quite hard. Let me get straight to how we do this. The word snow has four different letters. So there's actually four factorial, four exclamation mark, four times three times two times one, ways of arranging those four different letters. Four times three times two times one is 24 ways. And many of you would have got that. But then some of you would have said, yeah, but in how many of those ways is the W to the left of the S? That's gonna be complicated to write out all those examples. And the truth is we don't need to write out any examples there is a 50-50 chance of the W being to the left of S or being to the right of S. The W doesn't prefer to be on the left or the right. In exactly half of the ways, the W will be to the left, and in half of the ways, the W will be to the right of the S. So we simply divide the total number of ways, 24, by 2 to find out the number of ways where W is to the left of S. Seem like a really hard question? a particularly difficult Christmas question, but the truth is, this is my gift to you, there's a massive shortcut. 24 divided by two is 12. So the answer is 12. There are 12 ways to arrange those letters where the W is on the left. And please do let me know if you enjoyed this video at all, or if you learned anything, ideally both. And either way, have a very Merry Christmas.